Foot Clan, we have a great episode today, a Veterans Day episode. We've got matchups to talk about, news and notes. Uh, a little bear is emerging, and uh, you need to like, subscribe, leave a comment. You're going to love today's episode. Enjoy. The Fantasy Footballer Studio is brought to you by Samsung Galaxy. Visit Samsung.com to learn more. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Friday, November 11th. Andy, Mike, and Jason, the Fantasy Footballers, welcome in. Happy Veterans Day. Yeah. Thank you to the veterans out there. Busy day, catching up on the news. Got some matchups to talk about. I think we have seven more matchups to get into today. Mm -hmm. And we probably won't have time for anything else. After that, <laughs> uh, I think we got time for one more special thing. Yeah, yeah. If I get to uh, return to a long lost friend today, the wheel of shame. Yeah, it's like you never left. And it seems like you guys have crafted. I've done some, nothing. Some sort of. Uh, it's it's really not. It really. It's now not overblown. A, it's not a big deal. <laughs> it's overblown. It's just real stupid. And okay. I love it. Okay. Well, we'll get to that. The fantasy face off. At the end of today's show, Kyle the Borgogan, Papa Josh, Judge Giamatti in the building, hanging out in Deucer's Alley. Oh, yeah. Trying to make the lights reflect off of them a little bit better. Well, there it goes. Oh, off the top of the dome. It definitely there. reflects best off Goodness. of Papa Josh. Papa Josh, we have we have uh, powder yeah. that the professionals put on their face so that you don't have they that. They can't do anything for this. Oh, yeah. you got to have a hat in that spot. Can you powder a cue ball? I don't know if uh, you can. Of course. Really? Yeah. Take the gloss away? Yes. Uh, we are recording this show late Thursday afternoon, so all of our news updates um, are from that time period, but never fear. Mike is live with you on Sunday morning for Sunday Live, and we will also have the Injury Blitz podcast courtesy of injury expert Matthew Betts that will be hitting uh, the Foot Clan later today. But yeah. still, what a great yeah, game say, Having last said night. that, whew, man, that that play. Oh man, I I was just so impressed by the insert name quarterbacks <laughs> uh, playing in the rain. Uh, I th think. <laughs> right? No, we uh, we we don't get to react to the Thursday night football game. It's for the it's for the best. But yeah, PJ Walker uh, versus I didn't know he could do that. Mariota. Yeah. In a tropical storm. We'll skip that one. We'll sk skip the report. Um, but it's Friday. Foot Clan Friday. Every Friday, we give a $100 gift card to fantasychamps.com away to one of our supporters at jointhefoot.com. Jason, do the honors for us. Who wins today? Oh, sure thing. Let's see here. We've got a winner on uh, Patreon. It's. Uh, Brian Havens. Brian Havens, congratulations. You are the winner. Thank you for your support at jointhefoot.com. Let's talk news. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. Josh Allen did not practice on Thursday. Uh-oh. So it's not like he has to practice to play. But it doesn't give you any confidence when he's no. not out there. No, this this was an injury that, you know, even earlier in the week, we expected there's a good chance he misses the game when you're not practicing and you think there's a good chance you missed the game already. Um, that's, that's how I, right now, I would project him not to start. We talked about the Bills game yesterday and the fact that, you know, Stephon Diggs, you're still going to play him. Mm -hmm. Devin Singletary could be relied on even more. But you're not going to have the same offense without Josh Allen. McCole Hardman didn't practice Thursday either. 
Hey, the ab, the uh, what, what was the ab- injury? Abdomen. There it is. Yeah, yeah. I always throw some extra consonants <laughs> you, in there. You really want it to be a like abdominable. Yeah, yeah, like an abdominable injury. S- snowman. Yeah. David and Joku, who we thought was returning. Yeah. What was on the side on Thursday? No, 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 no. Non participant. We did not think he was returning. He said that we. How many times do we have to learn this lesson? The player always says he's going to play. Yeah, busted. I'm going to be good. Yeah, busted. <laughs> no. <laughs> don't listen to the players. Yeah, don't listen to the or players. Or the coaches. Right. Transactions. Um. So, yeah, it, it'd be pretty pretty nervous starting in Joku. Yes. The Raiders season continues to decline. Mm-hmm. Darren Waller and Hunter Renfro placed on injured reserve. Darren Waller did not lie to us. He said he's not, he will not be on a football field until he's 100%. But, so but that, there, will, that yeah. will not be for at least four he weeks. He had a setback. Yeah. Same same as Keenan Allen. Yeah, it's pretty unfortunate. Because that that's a completely lost season here. Hamstring for, for hamstrings be uh hamstringing. It's they, been a hamstrings long time. Be crazy. And and uh Mac Hollins, uh gigantic wide receiver, uh probably worth picking up now in most leagues. Yeah. Yeah, just to give you the background there, when Mac Hollins came into the league, Philadelphia five years ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, we looked this up. He was five, 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 eleven, one eighty two. He looked like, uh, you know, the beginning of Captain America, right? When uh, Steve Rogers has not had his uh, super juice, right, or yeah. whatever they wanted to call it. No, I mean, we, it's been a running joke that every time we see Mac Hollins change teams, he seems bigger. <laughs> He's just inflated. I mean, they did turn him into a tight end briefly, right? Yes. To it, be to be fair, he he was actually six four, yeah, two twenty at, yeah. at the draft, but. It, he certainly still seems to be getting bigger. But now you have no Darren Waller, no Hunter Renfro, and neither of those guys are going to be back in the near term. Matt Collins is going to get opportunities. Yes, if Devontae Adams doesn't take them all. What was the – I believe Devontae Adams. 17 gonna, targets, I think. Yeah, but I, it's the percentage. It's 47. 47%. So that makes three games this year that Devontae Adams has surpassed – the forty percent target mark. It's one to him, one to someone else on the team. <laughs> Let's go to him, back to him. One to somebody yeah. else. Kyler Murray returned to Cardinals practice on Thursday. Matthew Stafford remained in the concussion protocol. He's gonna miss. So Arizona's defense. I mean, the Rams were already the best team to play your defense against. Yeah, you. you I mean, put I, a, would, put I don't trust the Cardinals, but yet the Cardinals have been a top five defense. But put a backup quarterback behind that offensive line with. Really, only Cooper Cup as a reliable pass catcher. It's, John, yeah, John Wolford. Are good, you still uh, good luck, my friend? Are you still as excited about your Higby versus Cardinal situation? No, no, not without Matthew Stafford. All right, that was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com/insurance. Fantasy forecast. Covered on yesterday's show, we took care of the Seahawks, Bucks, Vikings, Bills, Lions, Bears, Broncos, Titans, Jags, Chiefs, Browns, Dolphins. Seven more matchups to cover today. Houston at one six and one. They travel to New York to take on the Giants, who are six and two. The DraftKings Sportsbook line: the Giants minus four and a half points. The over/under is forty-one. It's really not that big of a line for a team that's six and two plays playing a one and six team at home this game projects to be one of the slowest games of the week six of the eight giants games have hit the under so this has been a team that grinds it out plays good defense runs the football tries not to make as many mistakes texans run the third fewest plays per game yeah i mean this is running backs against running backs you've got damian pierce and saquon barkley both um who are the entirety of their respective offenses so you expect a lot of run game, very little passing, and that's going to usually trend towards the under. Wandale Robinson, wide receiver for the New York Giants. A lot of hope and promise, and he's a rookie uh, with an opportunity. But through three games played, he's on a pace for about 62 receptions, 578 yards. He scored in his first game. Obviously, a young player that even through the bye, you could see him further integrated into the offense. Is he somebody you're willing to take a chance on this week, or would you rather wait and see it happen on your bench? This is a wait and see for uh, for me if Wandale blows up against Houston, which 
you said it right after the bye week. You see teams kind of reshift their focus, get new players uh, integrated there. But I'd rather just watch. It. And if it happens, celebrate it because the following week he gets to play the Detroit Lions. And then you'd have some confidence. Yes. Darius Slayton? Dart throw? Uh, Probably I'd, not. The, the, this is, it's going to be a slow game. The Houston Texans, they are 32nd against fantasy running backs. I mean, this is a, this is the Saquon Barkley game. Who knows? Maybe even Matt Burita gets in here for a little bit. But it's basically I'm playing Barkley. I'm willing to play Damian Pierce because the volume is there. But, I mean, that's about it. I, did you guys see the quote from Brandon Cooks? Uh, so it's uh, on, So yesterday – as of the recording, but Brandon Cook said, quote, all of my teammates will tell you I love them very much and I care about them. They understand my situation. At the same time, I'm going to be there uh, be there for them the best I can. They understand that there's no bad blood there. They know I love them. So, yeah, don't play him this week. <laughs> that sounds like a man who is uh, sitting out. I, I don't know. It is, it's a very weird situation. It is. Damian Pierce, though. Yeah, sure. Go you ahead. have to play him. Yes. Um, anything else from this game that you guys want to talk about? Because I don't have anything Please, I want to talk no. about. Let's move on to the Saints at three and six, who take on the Pittsburgh Steelers at two and six. The DraftKings Sportsbook line: New Orleans minus one and a half on the road. The over/under is forty. I guess this is it for me. Andy's almost upset of the week. The line is so close, I will not accept an almost in this situation. Yeah, no. I will the, accept the Pittsburgh Steelers winning the ballgame. I am all in on the Steelers. I really, really am. I find this one of those games where I, I I disagree with a lot of people that I usually agree with on this game. I think that getting T.J. Watt back, coming off of a bye, uh, having a great coach, being at home, I think the Steelers' defense is a good play, and I'm I'm on the Pittsburgh side of this game. So it will be Andy Dalton against Kenny Pickett. Uh, Mike has some confidence in Andy Dalton. Yep. Streaming against the 31st ranked wide receiver defense. The Steelers giving up 34.3 points per game. That's a good reason to uh, to believe. It will just The other thing to look at here, uh, TJ Watt being back, yeah. Great player. Uh, you know, defensive player of the year type of, of a guy. But over the past six weeks, Steelers, 32nd against fantasy quarterbacks, 32nd against fantasy wide receivers. That's where my confidence yeah. comes from. TJ Watt changes it, but one player does not turn the 32nd into a scary matchup. But I will, I will throw in there, he had a matchup against the Las Vegas Raiders two weeks ago that he did not take advantage of. Andy Dalton? Yeah, he was outside the top 15 at quarterback. Um, it, it, and the one game he was a good one, a good quarterback, he threw a bunch of picks. So it makes me nervous, but, hey, He's, that's different opinions. Sure. He still had 17 points in that game against the Raiders. So, while well, QB 18 on the week, I mean, 17 points from your streamer is, is all right. Jason, would you play Dalton over Pickett in an emergency? In an emergency, I would play Dalton over Pickett. Yeah, he's obviously play anybody over Pickett. Pretty <laughs> close. Yeah, I mean, uh, Pickett hasn't done enough as a rookie. You you don't expect if you say, well, who's gonna th who's got the chance to throw for three touchdowns? It would be on the Dalton side, not on the Pickett side for me. Najee Harris, Jalen Warren, lots of reports about Jalen Warren getting more touches. Well, it's not hard to get more touches when you get very, very, very few touches. <laughs> so what that means yet to be seen. I mean, his carry counts uh, five two two six over the last four games. But he's looked pretty good on those carries. I mean, he's 5.5 .5 a carry in the last four games on limited work. Uh, and you could see him in the double-digit opportunity category in this game with a chance to prove himself. I don't think Najee Harris gets pushed to the sideline completely. But 50-50 opportunities, I would not be shocked. There's a lot of reporting going on about and some good things being said by Mike Tomlin about Jalen Warren, about maybe this will be more of a split. But it reminds me of so many times in the past where there's been communication like that it doesn't really come to fruition in in Pittsburgh I I would still bet on Najee being the vast leader of this rotation but 
this is an eyeballs on the backfield coming off the bye because this is when the change uh, in bell cow to uh, shared backfield would happen. Well, and, it could be like uh, Montgomery Herbert. I mean, yeah. Montgomery's technically out there 70% of the time, but Herbert's made his mark. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's fair. So I'm not going to I, – I want Jalen Warren on my team. I'm certainly not going to be starting him right here. I, I would still throw Najee in as, you know, a lower end RB3. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, he's basically an RB3 or yeah. flex option now, but he he's uh, – his targets over the, his last few games went up. I think he had six targets in his last game, and that's a little comforting because he needs that. He needs that volume in the passing game. Now, without Claypool – those targets will go – I think they'll be distributed uh, across the team. You, Deontay Johnson, George Pickens, Pat Fryermuth, and Najee all should have, you know, an extra target or two. Pat Fryermuth is my start of the week from yesterday's show. Really excited to see what Pickens can do with more opportunities. On the other side, Chris Olave, solid start. Yes. Alvin Kamara, you're going to play him? Yep. How are we feeling about the Taysom Hill experience? It seems – I was wondering that because I pulled up the box score. Yeah, what did he score? One fantasy point last week? Uh, 1.1. 1 .1. So, oh, much better. Uh, Taysom Hill is technically the tight end six on the season and yet has – Three big games. <laughs> has finished outside of the top 12 in the majority of his games. Yeah, I mean, he is very much feast or famine at the tight end yeah. slash quarterback slash uh, whatever he is position. Which is – he's still – playable yeah I would I would still put him in there for the touchdown opportunities some of those games outside the top 12 you know 8.1 fantasy points 7.8 yeah you'd take the, that from a tight end that's you know in everybody's range of outcome the Indianapolis Colts at three five and one take on the Las Vegas Raiders who Man. are two and six all eyes on this game mm -hmm. the DraftKings Sportsbook line Las Vegas minus six the over-under is just 42 it gives the Colts 18 points. Had a report yesterday of Matt Ryan returning to practice. And so uh, the ability to pivot from Sam Ellinger after two horrific starts, at least more possible with Matt Ryan practicing. But here we go. Jeff Saturday. See what you can do, my friend. The substitute teacher coming in. <laughs> so... Yeah, I mean, we, we're, we're going <laughs> to... It, it's really hard to know what to do with the offensive pieces for the Colts. If Jonathan Taylor's playing, he's he's going to be in my starting lineup. I, I agree. I, you know, he's he was back on Tuesday, and he's obviously super talented. He is the centerpiece, and you're hoping that Jeff Saturday, as a former center, can maybe work a few things out with this offensive line. Um, so he's in. It's really hard to trust Michael Pittman. I will say that the two weeks ago, the matchup two weeks ago, nine targets. That was with Ellinger, and last week was the Patriots. So I, I'm okay putting Pittman in. Um, I, I think he's a flex option. Yeah, I took a look back at the last 17 games of Michael Pittman's career. 134 targets, delightful. Yeah, 92 receptions, Great. awesome. Beyond that, it's not as good, right? 974 yards. Not great over 17 games. It shows that they keep using him on that super, super low-value receptions, which is annoying, and just two touchdowns in 17 games. So the good, lots of targets. The bad, not a lot of yards. Would you play Michael Pittman Jr. or Rondell Moore? I'd play Rondell Moore. Man, that's tough. Uh, I probably lean towards Rondell Moore right now. Michael, Michael Pittman or Adam Thielen? I'd play Thielen. Against Buffalo. Against Buffalo, I'll go Pittman. Good. I am afraid of Ellinger until he's replaced. If he's ever replaced. Yeah, he, uh, yeah. I mean, they've said he's the start of the rest of the season, but this is this is uh, the reboot here, so they could change their mind. I Jonathan mean, this, Taylor is feeling good, he said, the best he's felt. All That's right. That's great Let's go, JTT. Um, yeah, it's, it, you know, it's very rare for a team that is two and six – to be favored by six. That's the kind of dysfunction that is going on around the Colts that, uh, you know, the betting market is seeing. And so if that bleeds into all of our fantasy decisions. Uh, on the Raiders side of the ball, obviously Devontae Adams is in. Josh Jacobs is in. 
So then the question is just, can you play Matt Collins? Probably not. Yes, yeah, not a good matchup against the Colts defense. Yeah, it, it, he's he should be on rosters, I believe, but this isn't the matchup that I want to play him. But Foster Moreau, maybe, maybe. I mean, he's he's been okay in replacement of, of Darren Waller, and now you have no Hunter Renfro for sure because uh, he was put on the IR. Five and, targets, nine targets the last two weeks. Yeah, I mean, that he's not doing a whole lot with them, but Foster Moreau or Matt Collins, one of those two guys will have a better than advertised day. I'll, I'll say that's, that. That's fair. When you're favored, when you're at home, you got 24 points to put up on the board. I don't think it's 100% Devontae Adams in the passing game. No, it's 50%. Right. Right. That that's is a, that's close, number, real numbers. Is. Yeah, Foster Moreau might be someone that you're taking as like a DFS punt play at tight end, but I, I, I can't imagine putting him in my – picking him up to start him in my home leagues. Anything else from this game, Josh Jacobs, you feel confident? I mean, the Colts defense is improving. Yeah. Over the course of the year, is there a world where you're feeling good about that? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's. I don't think this is a smash matchup, but he's still getting the ball. You know, he had 20 opportunities the last game. Even if people were disappointed because it wasn't the number one, number three, number one fantasy finish on the week that he gave you in three consecutive weeks, but his, his usage is there, his talent is there. You're always starting Josh Jacobs rest of season. Okay, yeah, this, the Raiders six-point favorites. Despite yeah, looking that's, looking horrendous, it, that is, uh, it's surprising. I just I, they, they just don't believe the Colts can keep up. All right, let's take a quick break, and we'll come back with the Cowboys Packers. Back with the advertised Cowboys Packers. <laughs> I said that pretty excitedly. You were, yeah, you're pumped. Take us, take it away, man. I guess I was visualizing the, you know, the the famous Packers Cowboys yeah. match, matchups, right? I mean, that's great. The Cowboys are six Aikman and two. Favre. They're going to Lambeau. This should be really exciting. Except the Packers suck. Packers are four and a half point underdogs at home. The over under is forty three. Um, this is the hard, the hardest, yeah, the largest home underdog number for Aaron Rodgers in his history. Really? Which, seeing that, I almost asked the question when I when I saw there were four and a half point underdogs. I mean, when you are at home and you have Aaron Rodgers, you're not underdogs very often. No, but they don't have Devonte Adams. They don't have Romeo Dobbs. Uh, they probably won't have Christian Watson. Might not have a healthy Aaron Jones. So right. it's it's and they're playing one of the best defenses in the league. You and haven't seen have anything their... from Aaron Rodgers this entire season to believe that he can overcome hardships in a tough matchup. So obviously in his career, you've seen enough to go, hey, I'm not just fully betting against Aaron Rodgers. When people bet against him, he went on to be back to back two time MVP of the league. But right now you have to you have to abandon you know, the weekly bets until proven otherwise. Aaron Rodgers is not a good play. And outside of Alan Lazard. You know, Robert Tunyon being targeted at least five times. He saw five? Yeah. Wow. That was watching that game. I think that, he had four, no, four. Four receptions, maybe? Four. He had four targets, three for 29. Yeah. He, he, he okay. Went, he had been at, at uh, 12, 4, 6, 4. Yeah. It was really, really weird because it, yes. all of his snap percentage had been going up, his route participation had been going up, and then all of a sudden last week when they really needed him losing two wide receivers in the game, he plays 46% of snaps, it runs far fewer routes, and has you know fewer targets than he had been averaging. Yeah, and that could be one of those things where you know when you lose somebody mid-game, you don't ha get to make a new game plan. Um, you can adjust, but Alan Lazard, I think Robert Tunyon is a – uh, it's, 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 he's a scary play. I mean, anybody I on this agree. offense, they projected for 19.3 points at home. That's a, that's barely a point more than the Colts are this week. I, I think the scariest play on this team is, is Aaron Jones. Aaron Jones is a hot and cold player. He has monstrous performances, and uh, he's obviously a great player. He's dealing with whatever injury kept him out of the second half of last week. They're saying is you know he's okay. Uh, X-rays were fine, and so he's good to go, but He's hot and cold, and he's playing against 
you know, on number the number two ranked defense. Exactly. This is a really tough matchup. Do you look if you've got Aaron Jones on your roster? Do you look to pivot to a mid level guy out of fears of getting a complete dud game, or do you just say, "Look, he's Aaron Jones. I'm I'm riding or dying with him in my roster." Limited Wednesday, Thursday. Probably limited in the game. That's I mean, the truth. They'll probably take some of the work away from him if he's playing and re injury is a possibility and it's Dallas. Let me give you a couple names and you tell me uh if you would start Aaron Jones with what we know versus this player. David Montgomery. No, Montgomery plays Detroit. That's that's correct. Uh Cordero Patterson has Who already played. played. He has already played football. <laughs> and how uh, he Does, is, should you have played him? Should you have played yeah, Andy, should you have played Cordero Patterson? Uh, it's possible. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Gr great. Um, what about like Raheem Mostert, Jeff Wilson, <laughs> those types? Yeah, that's where the line I'd gets really Jones. close. I mean, uh, the matchup's good for Mostert and Wilson, but if Jones is out there, I think you'd take the shot on him. The the lack of having Romeo Dobbs, you need to throw the ball to Aaron Jones. Zeke, we'll see. Tony Pollard. Is an auto start if Zeke misses? I think he's close he's, to think, an auto start anyways. I agree. I, I'm starting him either way. C.D. Lamb, 31% target share in the year. You're going to play him. Dalton Schultz. I mean, last the, the week. The doctor. Last week for Dalton Schultz. Pretty nice. The doctor is back. The doctor is in. Yeah. Well, he, yeah, he's he's back in. He just he was at a he was at a, a training seminar. Oh, was he one of yeah, those like, conferences? He is he is a doctor who's committed to the craft. Every once in a while, you got to go back in for a little more education. And he's back. Dak is back. Six for seventy four last week. I mean, I'm due for a touchdown. If you stayed the course with with Doctor Schultz here two weeks ago, yeah, I, I think that you're in for you you'll you'll be happy. Yeah, you, I mean, it'd like. Not happy, like oh, I have a top three tight end, but happy you have a. You I don't have. have a top... a, I don't have a goose. Yeah, I don't have I, a Higby. I don't have a zero. I and I have a top ten play each and every week. Yeah, I, I would play Schultz ahead of Higby, uh, ahead of all the Ingrams and Comets. Tunyon. I would play him ahead of Tunyon for sure. Ahead of Kyle Pitts. What about Greg Dulcich? I'd play Schultz. Yeah, I'd play Schultz. Feels a little safer. Okay, especially when you're uh, favored like this. The Cardinals are three and six, and they're taking on the three and five Rams. The DraftKings Sportsbook line, Rams minus one and a half. The over-under is 41. What? That line still hasn't reacted? Well, the uh, again, we're recording this late Thursday. Yeah, that'll that'll be changed. So the line started at 43 and a half. It's already gone down. Uh, this game's pretty much a pick em. Uh Arizona's one and six against the Rams. It probably has a lot to do with the line. Yeah, and the fact that John Wolfert in his rookie season already beat the Cardinals like we've lost to this player before that. yeah so <laughs> I, he can run that's the thing uh, is he, he he was very mobile against can he, Arizona can he do that uh the, the the bootleg where the tight end rolls out to the side I'm sure the Cardinals will play. not be able to cover it okay good work was this, this last why, year this that is he did why it? Higby, no that was his rookie season two years ago I think it was the last game of the season I thought he ran against this maybe I'm thinking of somebody else let me Oh, yes, it was the last game of the rookie season. Yeah, he was 6 for 56 on the ground. Wolford. Wolford. <laughs> How? <laughs> um, so, but, but it takes away all the – not that there was a lot of confidence in the passing game weapons beyond Cooper Cup, but you pretty much can't play anybody, right? I mean, um, if Wolford's the starter, which is what we're thinking is going to happen, at least as of this recording, Allen Robertson, Allen Robinson, Van Jefferson, Tyler no, Higby, Higby's Cam the Akers – I think there is a world where your roster would have you starting Tyler Higby. I don't. I mean, I I had him going in as a as a smash start of the week against Arizona. Like you said, those little rollouts from tight ends, they haven't been able to stop it from any team all year, and that seems like a pretty gimme play if you've got John Wolford as your starting quarterback. He threw for like 230 yards in his rookie season against us, but obviously had a much better offense offensive line at that time. So I'm not looking to start. Tyler Higby, but I, you know, I would start him over Tunyon uh, that we just talked about. Oh, silly goose! You would not. What? Yeah, I After would. After the snaps went way down, let's water bet that yeah. one. Because... Yeah, I mean, water bet. I gen I genuinely think the best advice is to Higby's had three straight games of killing your fantasy roster, and so because of that, I'd like to 
take a what I call a Higby break. Hig break. It was right there. Yeah, I thought about it. And I want him on the bench, and I want to try something new. Like if I've eaten bad food three weeks in a row from a restaurant, I'm getting a new dish. I'm not having the same dish. I'm certainly not having that dish prepared not by Matthew Stafford, but prepared by uh, his sous chef because he's out for the game. So I'm willing to try something different on for, on you know this I, week. I completely understand what you're saying, and you're right to say that. But one of the things that you're not considering is that the 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 sous chef that is preparing this food has put you at the the window seat with the most beautiful sunset view. The location here of the Arizona Cardinals defense. It, 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 you might not have the best steak, but you might enjoy that steak while you look at the surroundings. It's risky to me. Yeah, very risky. I I. I agree. It's risky. I think Tunyon is riskier. I mean, he's Robert Tunyon. Aside from one game, it's like thirty yards. Aside of what? As, aside from like Robert Tunyon had one big game where he had ninety yards, but every other game he's thirty yards or or fewer. He's been a lot better than Higby the last three weeks. Not a lot. Not a lot better. I mean, he's, better. Yeah, better. Yeah, multiples of three. Better. Right. Uh, maybe, well, let's see. When like, you, we when got you 14. Goose, it's infinity yeah. better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, we're looking at about 14 total points from Tunyon over his last three games, and Higby is at. Uh, I lost his page. Three. Yeah, three or four. Yeah. So, I mean, not, I I feel like uh, you guys have a, a very large amount of confidence in the player in that the, hasn't been playing well. It's no, 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 no. The match, we have a lot of confidence matchup. in tight ends against Arizona. Yeah. Uh. The Arizona Cardinals are 31st against tight ends, so that would be why. The yes. Cardinals offense, Kyler should be back out there. You could see some limitations on his rushing work due to the hamstring injury. James Conner, 12 opportunities last week, five targets. He will be the check down for Kyler if he's not running as well. Hopkins, play him. Rondale Moore, PPR yeah, you leagues, you have to play him. Yep, I agree. Zach Ertz is a must start. I have been trying in my dynasty roster. I told Mike this yesterday. <laughs> it's like I've got Greg Dulcich waiting in the wings. I've got younger players. I have to keep playing Zach Ertz. Like he's the number four tight end in fantasy. Yeah, he just keeps getting it done, getting the simple targets falling down, doing what Zach Ertz does. But he's done it for a long time, and you know he's consistent. He's a must start. Kyle, if you had to start Higby or Tunyon, who are you starting? I'd rather not. Either. No, you got you got to answer. I'll that do Higby. Okay, all right. That means you get watered too. Los <laughs> Angeles at five and three take on the four and four San Francisco 49ers. 49ers are seven point home favorites. The over under is forty five and a half. That gives the Chargers just nineteen point three points. Seven points. It makes sense to me. Yeah, the Chargers I, snuck a win last week, and they looked bad on offense. Yeah, I had a really hard time picking this one. This was one of the games where when I sat there and I looked at this line, my initial thought was immediately San Francisco, but it's hard to give a touchdown to Justin Herbert. He can make things happen, but he just doesn't have the weapons, and, and you saw that last week without Keenan, without Mike Williams. I think that, and, and this is a much better defense. Jo I would bench him. You would bench Herbert. Yeah. yeah, I don't blame you. I, I get that. I never said it, and I never want to say it again, but this is the week that I would bench Justin Herbert. Um, Obviously, who you're benching him for would matter. But I think we've talked about, like, Geno. Sure. Like, Gino. I'm willing to take a shot on Geno. Well, let's Fisser. talk about this game. What Jimmy about, Garoppolo. Yeah, what about the other side. Yeah. Versus Herbert. Yeah, I'd play Jimmy G. And it, I don't like saying it. <laughs> I don't think I could do that. I don't. Think I mean, I just think I think that this is a great, great defense. You talk about matchups. Herbert last week had the best matchup you could have had with Atlanta. Still couldn't get you fantasy points that you needed on the road this week yeah. against the number four against tight ends, four against running backs, tenth against quarterbacks. Dude, I'm not doing it. I'm gonna play Jimmy G, and if. He just dumps the ball to McCaffrey ten times. I will get more fantasy points out of that. Well, that's that is absolutely true. I think he'll be handing the ball a lot to McCaffrey in this one because the Chargers have not been able to stop the normal regular run game. And I mean, McCaffrey should ha he should have like the number one fantasy week of the year. Uh, it's hard, on paper. hard to beat his last game. That is that is very true. Jimmy Garoppolo's pace. Over the last four weeks, pretty good sample, right? 70% completion, 4,600 yards, 34 touchdowns. 
Yeah. He's, Which I didn't, I wasn't sure. I was like going to pull him up and look sure. at him compared to Herbert. I feel like he's been the king of like 17, 18 points. But he's had two touchdowns in each of those weeks. Yeah. And they are, they're getting Debo Samuel back. I think Jimmy's a sneaky start this week. I agree. Um, CMC play him. Debo, yep. Ayuk, probably. George Kittle, yeah. Yep, yep. I mean, there's no benches. That's five five starts. Yeah, well, the Chargers defense can make that happen. <laughs> <laughs> and then on the other side, Herbert. We talked about him, but Eckler. Yeah. Eckler will go in. Um, Josh Palmer, you would play. like it, the, 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 the place that the 49ers get beat is at the wide receiver position, so I'm still okay playing Palmer. Uh, and just a, a note, I, I think we talked about it, but just making sure people realize Isaiah Spiller has taken the number two job. So if you're look, if you're at that point of your roster where you're starting to put insurance running backs on, or you're you're just putting high upside insurance running backs on from other teams, or you're the Eckler manager. It, yeah, that's what I'm saying. It it at this point looks like Isaiah Spiller would be that guy. DeAndre Carter, Gerald Everett. I don't really want to yeah, mess no, around thanks. in this matchup. Yeah, I don't either. I I. I would play Gerald Everett over Higby, and then that that's like the line. He's a low-end tight end start for me. I don't love the matchup, but he is needed, and he still has Herbert. Obviously, that didn't come through last week. It's still target. He had eight targets, five catches for 36 yards. I think he was five for 30-something the week before. Five for 63. I mean, any one of these tight ends can be the tight end 10. All you yeah. need is just an accidental touchdown. Washington is 4-5 on Monday Night Football, taking on the 8-0 Philadelphia Eagles, the DraftKings Sportsbook line here. Philadelphia minus 10.5. The over-under is 44. Boy. Oh, you want, you want another one? You can have two this week. What? I don't blame Why? you. I, Why? Why? <laughs> Andy's almost upset of the week. It's, okay, wh why? I I get it a little bit. Okay, it, okay. So here's why: their defense has been playing very, very well. Chase Young is expected as of this recording to come back. Okay. It is a divisional game that a lot of times those things surprise the, you. It's on the road for them. A ten and a half point game. They've also been so almost upsetting is just covering the ten and a half. Making this a close game on Monday Night Football, I, I for the reasons Jason said, I'll, uh, I'm going to put on top of those. They were um, they were a whisper away from beating the six and one Minnesota Vikings. Uh, they've won. They had won three games in a row before that. Like Jason said, divisional game. And there's look, everybody thinks the undefeated team's never going to lose. It happens all the time. The sure. undefeated team is out there. They always lose. All but one. Right and um, yeah, well, and so I think it happens. Right, it happens at some point. You don't, you don't get, you don't get it done when you think you should. And, and look on paper, ten and a half point favorites. I just think it might be a more interesting game than we think. Doesn't mean it affects whether you're starting your core eagle players. I think Miles Sanders is going to have a good time. I think he's going to have a party. Um, I it's Jalen Hurts and those wide receivers that I'll be interested to see what happens on Monday Night Football. Yeah, uh, Dallas Goddard, he's the one player that I think that it matches up poorly, but there's nothing. He's in. in yeah, he's in no, matter, in no matter what. So you start him um, earlier this week. You, I, I rode with a high line on Devonta Smith. I think that the, you can start him in this matchup. He lines up pretty well. Um, but I, I do think that this could be a closer game, which – Sometimes that's you know a, a drag it out defensive battle, but maybe it's just back and forth. Just to illustrate what Jason was saying about their defense playing better over the last six weeks, they've given up fourteen point nine fantasy points to the quarterback position. So they on have, average, yeah, on average, they have tightened it up, and uh, they're number one against tight ends in that span. Adding to what he said about Goddard, in what was the what was that time span? Last six weeks. Okay. Uh, Terry McLaurin, eight targets in three straight weeks with Taylor Heineke. So if you've been playing him, you keep playing him. You hope things work out better against the Eagles. You know, last week wasn't a good matchup for Damian Pierce. Damian Pierce found a way against the Eagles. You know that the, uh, the Washington commanders are going to try to find some balance in this offense. 
I think Gibson, based on the the line in this game, should have opportunities in the passing in the passing game. Yeah, us being able to just say the words that this could be a closer game than we think doesn't change the fact that the line is ten and a half. It should be a blowout for the unbelievably great Eagles. And if that happens, Antonio Gibson will inherit the pass catching role of JD McKissick and should be a, an okay flex here. Yeah. He's on 72 target pace on the year, regardless of the McKissick injury. Let's say the, uh, I, I'm trying to find something. I'm not getting any McKissick updates, uh, as of now, but the neck injury, he's not going to be out there. Yeah. I, I, it's the, it's, it's the Monday night game. So injury news is always pushed a little bit forward. But Antonio Gibson this past week, 58% of the snaps. He hasn't seen a snap count like that since week one. So that that was his second highest snaps, turned into 14 opportunities. It wasn't the the target floor that you would hope for, but I think that that will return. And he's just, he's a, a sneaky low-end play. And I do love Jeff the Wilson Eagles or, defense or, here. Okay. Just because Taylor Heineke, I mean, he just – he literally closes his eyes when he throws the ball. I was just going to ask you a Gibson question about Jeff okay. Wilson. Would you start Jeff Wilson or Antonio Gibson? Um, so Jeff Wilson against Cleveland, I th man, I think I would go. I'm on the Gibson side of that one. I think I would go Gibson. I'm on the it's, Wilson it's side. Pretty close. It is very close. I don't blame anyone going either way there. You're, you're searching for a touchdown. I think that the floor might be higher with Gibson because of the receiving, but I uh, Jeff Wilson has a higher odds for me of getting a touchdown than Gibson. If you would like to see the breakdown, the start sit tool on the website, the fantasyfootballers.com, all of the rankings are on the website each and every week. At the beginning of the week, we put the waiver rankings up there as well to try to make life easy on you. And um, it's time, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Fantasy Face-Off, presented by DraftKings. Well, 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 here we are again, old wheel of shame. I uh, I still don't really know how I lost last week, but all the numbers said I lost big. Yeah, because it it our teams were awesome. Our, it was due to our teams being incredible. Yeah, It I didn't that help it. that I had spent a lot on Aaron Jones, who went out injured it last week. And so I get to spin the wheel. Let's do it. Wheel of shame. All right, spin that wheel. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right, so we'll let's blah, see. Blah, we blah, 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 blah. banana, Minecraft, Rainy day, Joe, Joe Dirt. Dirt. Oh, what is this? Nunchucks. How can nunchucks be? How can nunchucks a be a costume? I don't understand. What would not, well? I you're see, gonna need to take your hat off. I see That's some easy enough. I see some nunchucks. I mean, <laughs> did you call them nunchucks? I did. Yeah, I see, I see some what nunchucks. What is this? Well, what, that's a nun outfit. That might be a habit. <laughs> <laughs> because you. <laughs> Or <laughs> how does one? Well, yeah, what? What? How do you put that? Yeah, on? just like that. Doesn't the white right? thing have to? Yeah, the white thing goes in. Yeah, there you go. Okay, just, so the hood goes. The, yeah, like this? there you go. Just <laughs> and like where does that. this go? That goes around your neck. Um, this is great. So yeah, this is the like a bib. This is none just like a bib. <laughs> and the black shirt works so good. <laughs> yes, it does. Oh, the nunchucks. You gotta pull the bib down. Yeah, there you go. Oh, <laughs> so spin. You gotta swing those nunchucks, baby. Let's go. All right, are we ready for these fantasy rosters, Jason? This is the stupidest one we've ever Thank done. Thank you. Thank you. I, just... I look pretty ridiculous you though. Do. I mean, this worked out. Um. <laughs> Why don't I Rat kick it off? Rattle that chain. Why don't I blow your minds? I chose a different quarterback than the oh, one we all thought we were going to choose at the no beginning of the week. No fields for you. Can I guess? Yeah. Tua. Yes. All right. I took Tua Tungavailoa. Miami takes on Cleveland. He's actually ranked number one in it's, terms of our DraftKings rankings. He's it's 60, a good pick. He's 6,700, and I, you know, you guys let it leak that you were going fields in the office today, and I just didn't want us all having the exact same quarterback so i'm I, taking a risk yeah it, it it is a risk but i will say this i i love the fact that we have different quarterbacks and i did have a little bit of fear with fields that because they're that he's playing, gonna be too good <laughs> that because they are playing the detroit lions yeah that running game might get the into the running end zone. game might get into the end zone from not fields 
because obviously Fields' running game can get in there, but that David Montgomery and or uh, Khalil Herbert could get in there. So, Mike, are you Fields as well? Yeah, Justin Fields, 6,500. Right. You guys still went with it. Yes. Yeah. yes. So, Tua was just 200 more. Justin Fields forever. Uh, I could not have afforded Tua. Okay. Nor could I. So, uh, at running back, I've got two monsters at the running back position. Saquon Barkley, 8,600 oh, yes. against Houston. And then Travis Etienne against Kansas City for 7100 I'll be honest with you. I was really hoping on this segment that Saquon I, Barkley's name would not come up. He I was he, stupid. <laughs> he was in my roster forever. Also, but, neither of you have. But I, I, but I had to make a pivot. No, I have Travis Etienne at 7100 and I have across the field from Saquon in a much worse matchup, Damian Pierce who is 6,300. By the way, Justin Fields' rushing prop is at 58.5 yards. So that, that that's what they're they're setting as their baseline. It is funny because uh, Barkley, I think both times I've put him in my lineups, you guys did not have him with me. Yeah. He's at a 93.5 rushing yard number. Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's such a good player this week. I have Travis Etienne as well, oh, 7,100. Wow. But my other big name, I went with Alvin Kamara, 7,400 mm. against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, I... I he was a name. I had him in and out. Jason's just living out. with regret De today. Defend yourself. You had Andy. control. This is like the coach thing where it's like, we I, wish we gave him more carries. I, you could give him the carries. I'm going to look at the tape. We don't know how he didn't get in there. Yeah. Well, the reason I wasn't able to go that direction is because. Hold on. You wait your turn. Oh, I, I didn't don't realize we had to stay in. The, the nun. We stay in order. Okay. Well, that's very. The nun is very orderly. That's very stay orderly. in order. I'm hit my wrist with a ruler. I I will. Um, and it won't be a ruler, though. It'll be a nunchuck. <laughs> they would be more intimidating with nunchucks. Oh, absolutely. Um, wide receivers, I, of course, he's a staple in my lineups of late. Jalen Waddell is in my lineup at 7,600, stack with Tua. George Pickens. I'm going with Pickens at 5,000 against New Orleans. I think this is his week to shine. And then at 4,200, I'm going with the Mac attack. Mac Hollins, okay. 4,200. Darren Waller, Hunter Renfro on IR. The nun has spoken. Okay. I get it. I like it. We have a lot of similarity. Uh, just like last week, your great pick of Jalen Waddle. Uh, I have Tyreek Hill, the number so expensive. He was so expensive. This is why was he ninety one hundred? Uh, have Alvin Kamara? Yeah, he, uh, he was. Uh, in fact, ninety one hundred. That is yeah. Probably the most expensive player I've That's ever put so in my lineup. Crazy. But in full PPR, he is just so unstoppable. We talked about his touchdown yes, upside. But you got to fill a bunch of other positions. Uh, is true. I have George Pickens Do you? as one of those other positions at 5,000. And I went back and forth between uh, the Mac attack, but I went with Zay Jones, 4,400. Uh, just 200 more. And I think the matchup is much, yep. much better against the Chiefs. Uh, Jalen Waddell. George Pickens, so my differentiator is Mr. Chris Olave at 6,800 against the Pittsburgh Steelers. I'm going. I I like their offense. I think that he's going to be just fine. All right, I do have Zay Jones on my roster as well. He is my flex at 4,400. The spot starter. I was actually having trouble with Matt Collins and Wandale. That was actually the one I was making okay, a tough decision fair. with. Went with Matt Collins after the injury news. Uh, for my tight end, I went with. Robert Tunyon, of course, after our debate today. Robert Tunyon in there at 3,700. Um, had looked at Cole come out a little bit, went wow, with 30, Tunyon. Tunyon's 3,700. 3, That's right. Wow. wow. I saved $300. Uh, I was going to finish. Okay. Who's your defense? You keep trying to talk yeah. before I can finish. Uh, sorry, Mrs. Holloway. Um, <laughs> I went with the Cardinals defense at 2,700 yeah. against the Rams. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's a good defense. I, uh, at tight end, Went with Greg Dulcich, 3,400. Um, he's been on fire as my start of the week, so I figured I'd stick with him. At flex, I've got Jamal Williams, only 5,900. Wow. In a really good matchup against Chicago uh, after they've gotten rid of their defense. That's impressive that you got to squeeze him in there. And for, <laughs> for my defense, I went with the Minnesota Vikings. All the way down at 2200 They were priced down because they are playing the Bills, and this hopes the Josh Allen is yeah. not playing. I mean, come on. What what defense do I have, Jason? The Vikings! Of course, I have the Minnesota Vikings. Uh, me and Greg D. also chilling at 3400 And my flex play to get all of those high-priced guys in there. Here it is, fellas. 
Samare Tori. Oh, wow. Uh, Green Bay Packers. Yeah, it's not bad. Here's the situation for the Packers. Christian we'll get some targets. Watson probably out. Uh, Alan Lazard is, of course. There's Sammy Watkins. Bumps and bruises. Romeo, yeah, sucks. Do Romeo Dobbs is out. So I, like, he's going to be on the field for 3,900. I think you could do worse. Same reasons I like Tunyon this week. You need some targets. Uh, by the way, I did you guys a huge favor today. Oh, that's nice. Wearing the black shirt. Yeah, yeah no, did. the black shirt. Because this is full nun. I look real dumb. There was a robe that came with it, but I was like, well, we can't do Don't the Don't need the robe. robe. Don't need the robe. This was all a Jason uh, creation? Yeah. The well, idea of was... combining the nunchucks with the nun. <laughs> it's so stupid. It's pretty dumb. Yeah. Nunchucks. Yeah. Get it? Yeah, no, we we get it. Uh, that was, on words. That was Fantasy Faceoff presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app. Now use the promo code BALLERS to get $200 in free bets instantly when you place a $5 bet on any football game. That is the code BALLERS only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Well, i got to get out of this nun outfit, so I'm going to press this button over here. Say goodbye to the Foot Clan. Say thank you to Judge Giamatti and company back there in Deucer's Alley. Thank you, Deucer's. Enjoy the weekend of football. See you later, Foot Clan. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.